Hey friends, welcome to Chai and Coaching, Rob here. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about Duke University, uh, what you need to know about this very prestigious university in America, and also pros and cons about the industrial engineering program, and even the job scope for the industry here in America. Check it out. <laughs> Friends, thanks so much for tuning in. This is gonna be a really fun video. Drew, you might've seen him before in a previous e-summit we've done, but Drew today uh, is gonna to talk about a very top college here in America, Duke University. So Drew, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for uh, giving me this platform to share my uh, opinions and my journey uh, with the fellow international students um, across the world. Um, about applying for graduate programs in the United States and uh, particularly my own university, uh, my alma mater, Duke University. I hail from um, Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad, that's what the, the original pronunciation is, in Gujarat, in India. And um, I came to the US after high school. I did my undergraduate in the US and um, I worked for a few years in medical devices, overlapping industrial engineering. So and quality assurance. And then I did my master's at Duke University, uh, master's of engineering management program. Um, it's a two semester master's program. And right now I'm working uh, with uh, Northrop Grumman. It's, uh, it's in defense contracting as a systems engineer. Uh, and I just want to share my, uh, to share some tips about my experiences and my journey with all of you and hopefully it would help um, more people. Drew, I'm super excited. It was fun really getting to work with you at that Job Ready e-summit we did. And there's some great recordings of Drew there as well, sharing his story, journey, and tips. So we'll have a link for that if you guys want to see uh, his presentation there. But Drew, first question, why Duke University? Uh, you know, uh, top university in America, um, especially for research, but why should students, you know, consider Duke or what are some of the pros and cons about Duke? For the program that I intended to enroll in, it's called as a Master of Engineering Management. It's like a, a baby brother of MBA uh, oriented towards engineers. Uh, and there were uh, nine universities. Um, actually, there's a cohort called MEMPDC, Master of Engineering Management a Consortium uh it, that consists of nine top universities which offer this program and duke is one of them i chose duke because of the uh the length of the program which is uh, a one-year program compared to a lot of other universities which were two years long and also the location uh in north carolina uh it has decent weather and whatnot and uh, also it was a found founding uh school uh, i started this program in 1990 uh, I did some research on the history of the program. And it started in 1990 and uh, it spread out uh, to other universities, uh, including Dartmouth, uh, Tufts, United, uh, University of Southern California, Purdue, uh, Johns Hopkins, um, Northwestern, and MIT. Those are all really good universities. <laughs> yeah. So these nine universities are part of the consortium uh, for engineering management programs. Uh, and engineering management is uh, overlapping a lot of courses uh, that are taught in industrial engineering and systems engineering. So uh, engineering management, industrial engineering, and systems engineering. Uh, these are all closely related courses. Each and every one of those nine universities have their own specialization. Uh, Duke is more popular uh, for their business school, the Fuqua School of Business. Uh, more so than the Pratt School of Engineering. Duke gave the MEM students, which is under the um, School of Engineering. It's offered within Duke School of Engineering, but Fuqua School of Business also offers a lot of courses uh, to the MEM students. So that is one good reason. Uh, if you guys are interested in studying the uh, business side of engineering, then Duke is a really good school. Yeah, yeah. what are just some pros and cons about student life at Duke? So the student life at Duke, um, was it's most of the uh, master's students are it's a pretty it's pretty diverse they try to maintain the diversity um, but most of them are Indians and Chinese uh, to be honest but there are also people from Latin America uh, and Europe coming in <clears throat> for this program and uh, the so the program is divided into 30 credits so 10 courses three credits per course which you're supposed to take it in two semesters, but a lot of international students take the entire course in three semesters with an internship in the middle, mm -hmm. so that that internship can, can be converted into a full-time uh, position later on, or uh, that just gives them an edge over other students. 
So most of the people joining this program are international, about 80 to 90 percent. Um, a few of them are domestic students. I was a domestic uh, student, so that's why I completed it in two semesters. Uh, but there are four core courses um, that are mandated courses for everyone. And then the other four courses you can choose it's, uh, from a range of electives. And then you have one internship and an internship assessment. So that's pretty much the curriculum that really attracted me uh, since I have a broad spectrum of electives that I can choose from. Mm-hmm. So some of the popular streams that people go into from the MEM program are um, data analytics. Uh, people also go into consulting or uh, right now there's a lot of popularity in me- medical technology and financial technology. These are some of the popular streams. Uh, also supply chain operations which I uh, particularly focused on, which overlaps with industrial engineering, is uh, something that I can talk about more in depth if um, <clears throat> there are more students who are interested in this specialization. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you guys have any questions or want to go deeper into any of those topics. One fun fact, so me growing up, I'm a big basketball fan, played basketball, and I loved college basketball. So Duke University was always one of my favorite college basketball teams. Coach K and I loved watching their teams in the NCAA tournament every year. So even though I didn't go to Duke and didn't live in North Carolina, I was always a Duke basketball fan as a kid growing up. So go Blue Devils. (laughs) And and we were very lucky that in 2019, uh, we were blessed to be, you know, witnessing Zion Williamson, Cam Reddish and uh, uh, RJ Barrett um, and Uh, Jack White. So these were some of the top players, and we got to see free games, um, and all the graduate students and undergraduate students could watch these games. And mm-hmm. seeing Zion Williamson's uh, 360 dunks was just an incredible experience. Uh, yeah, it was really visually stimulating. Yeah. I, I I think I'm I'm really lucky to be going in the 2019 uh, batch. So, uh, but I highly recommend everyone uh, to who are into sports to. Uh, join Duke as well. I have a good friend who went into sports analytics uh, and the main reason why he joined Duke was because of the sport. Uh, it's NCAA Division I uh, sports team. So he uh, got a good job in a sports analytics company and analytics is a big uh, field that a lot of people are trying to get into. Mm-hmm. So this program is definitely one of them. Awesome. Yeah, lots of legendary players have come out of Duke. So let's talk mm-hmm. more specifically, Drew, now about your program. Tell us about the master's degree you did. Kind of just explain what that is, why people should consider studying this, and just any kind of tips and tricks from your what you learned while studying this program at Duke for your master's. Just a fun fact, industrial engineering is like the third most common, uh, third most popular engineering major in the world. And uh, Henry Ford, the uh, founder of uh, Ford, was also an industrial engineer. You know, I definitely motivate and highly recommend people who follow industrial engineering and engineering management. Uh, the reason uh, I went into Duke was uh, the, <clears throat> for the MEM program uh, was the range and breadth of electives that Duke offers. I particularly took uh, supply chain and operations and uh, decision sciences uh, because I wanted to uh, work in um, <clears throat> work. So I, I came from medical devices background. Uh, I worked in quality assurance, uh, validation of equipment, facilities, class three medical devices, and uh, I wanted to go into. I wanted to learn more about technology and uh, its applicability in industry. So that is the main reason why I joined uh, this Duke MEM program. I also got admits from uh, Johns Hopkins. So Johns Hopkins is a uh, more geared towards biology and biomedical uh, programs. Uh, But I wanted to keep my options open uh, into other domains like defense, aerospace, or medical devices. Purdue was another school that I got into, but so Purdue is a really good school uh, for industrial engineering. Uh, It has a lot of good um, courses in in industrial and aerospace engineering. Neil Armstrong went there. So that is also a a great school if you wanna uh, do Texas A&M and Purdue is really good for industrial engineering focused MEM. Um, then there was Tufts. Uh, Tufts is good for people who want to go into information systems. And then there's USC. Um, the I really liked USC, but the reason I did not go there was it was two years long and it's uh, really crazy expensive to live in LA. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, that was one other reason. I, I don't mind working in LA, but studying in LA is uh, 
it's quite expensive. So mm -hmm. same, same for Columbia and Stanford. These are really high achieving green schools. Uh, they also offer masters of engineering, management science and engineering degrees um, for people who have near perfect GRE scores and uh, near perfect GPAs. Um, and there is slightly more analytical um, <clears throat> compared to um, and more quantitative uh, heavy quant heavy um, curriculum compared to other schools those were um, you know some of the reasons why and Cornell is also a good school for MEM but the program is offered by Department of Civil Engineering so people who are more people coming from civil engineering backgrounds could um, go into Cornell and then you have Northwestern. Uh, Northwestern is also um, good but people it's oriented more for people who have three or more years of work experience. Sort of if you have three or more years of work experience then you might as well do an MBA over an MEM. But this was an overview of uh, my all the schools that I applied to and uh, the reason I chose Duke was um, the slightly entrepreneurial or in the business uh, <clears throat> touch <clears throat> and the the prestige of the business school uh, my core courses that I took uh, that everyone has to take in MEM is uh, marketing uh, finance uh, management and um, um, the other one was intellectual property law and management so these are the four courses that uh, core courses that everyone else everyone has to take which was uh, the hardest the hardest was uh, I found finance and marketing to be pretty hard uh, finance, especially because uh, I have no no acumen or background in finance at all. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> so, for uh, as a mechanical engineering with an applied mathematics minor, I I took a lot of advanced calculus classes and whatnot. But the calculus is the math in calculus is completely different from the math in finance. Marketing was challenging at at the same time it was. Uh, it really d develops your uh, thinking process and makes you think in a group and it's a more collaborative environment because uh, half of our of our grade was group based and the other half was individual. Mm -hmm. So you're forced to participate in a group uh, and then you learn the basics of marketing for uh, highly technology, high tech industries. You also uh, take uh, one uh, class on um, simulation software for um, on Salesforce. So if you want to go into Salesforce and um, learn CRM uh, and SRM, all of these are SAP tools, mm -hmm. uh, customer relationship management and uh, supplier relationship management, then this course is definitely useful. Great details. This is very comprehensive and how people understand if this is the kind of thing they should get into. So let's ask this one last question that people always want to know about. So for industrial engineering or engineering management, what's kind of the job scope for that industry here in America? So the job scope for industrial engineering uh, and engineering management is definitely out there. Uh, even with the, the reforms that uh, the Trump administration is going through uh, for students, uh, international students, a lot of students get discouraged, but uh, I think that um, if you are going into any of these streams like analytics in, in data science or consulting or industrial uh, engineering related courses, I think that uh, you should definitely apply. No matter what the decision is in November and uh, all the immigration reforms, the job outlook is definitely good. Uh, Tesla is uh, also hiring a lot of industrial engineering uh, students their market uh, over overcame GM, Ford, and uh, Chrysler, all the big, oh, yeah, Chrysler, crazy. All the big car companies. Uh, so they have a lot of job openings. Walmart and Amazon and Instacart, CVS Pharmacy. Uh, all of these companies are trying to move towards uh, digitization and uh, agile transformation. So with these um, sort of buzzwords and um, <clears throat> blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, all these, the research in these fields going on. As you've seen, the stocks of Amazon have skyrocketed uh, and that is definitely a good reason uh, why they want to, uh, why more people should apply to universities and then end up in Amazon. I'm recently living with a lot of UCS students because I'm in Orlando right now, in Orlando, mm -hmm. Florida. And I know uh, amongst the master's cohort, people who did master's in data analytics, about seven people got an offer from Amazon already. 
um, and they were very excited to join. So I highly recommend people to apply in this field, <clears throat> uh, especially people from computer science, uh, computer engineering, and uh, software uh, backgrounds, uh, IT backgrounds. Uh, in in the next decade or two to three decades, uh, there's a lot of growth and opportunities in machine learning, AI, and a lot of companies are utilizing these platforms and hiring more people. Sort of the robots are replacing human beings, but they still need people to control uh, and code. So all the coders out there, I definitely highly recommend. Um, people coming from mechanical engineering or civil, chemical, all of these backgrounds, I also recommend them to uh, take more online courses in um, <clears throat> in your chosen field and also take more, more um, IT courses like SQL or uh, Python <clears throat> and uh, Tableau for data visualization uh, to keep up with the market trends. But I definitely encourage all the people to apply. Great industry, great field, great opportunities, mm -hmm. even in, in the tough pandemic time. So that's really encouraging. Yeah. You guys, I don't know about you, but I learned so much. So if this was helpful, give a big like, thumbs up to say thanks to Dhruv, telling his experience, his stories. Um, if you have any more questions about him and his background or just uh, this degree, let us know in the comments so we can get back to you guys or you can connect with him on LinkedIn as well. And Dhruv, thanks so much, buddy. This has been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks uh, for collaborating uh, on this. If you have any more questions, then please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, I would be happy to help you. Awesome. Insight. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe to Chai and Coaching. We want to help you guys be successful in your journey. And yeah, I learned so much and it's going to definitely benefit you guys. So take the advice and all the research that Drew has done. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers.